Hello everyone and welcome to another News Coulomb video and another Ford Ranger Electric update. And the news that you've all been waiting for, I think, I don't know, um, but I wanted to share with you, at least for my first battery pack build, the battery cells that I decided to go with for my Ford Ranger Electric uh, build. Um, and uh, they aren't actually Kalb cells. These cells are the 280 amp hour uh, lithium iron phosphate cells. Now, these particular cells were um, from Lito Kala, um, and uh, they're a, you know, a Chinese uh, made cell that you can basically order from AliExpress, Alibaba, these, these different websites. I know Lito Kala doesn't make their own cells, and I believe it might be BLS, but um, I'm not exactly sure on who makes these. Uh, the good thing about these type of cells, this pretty much this exact format, um, is that they're readily available from a number of different sources. Um, and so, like, if you were to order them, you can order them in bulk, and you can order a lot of them. Um, and so... Uh, I think most people at this point are using these for solar back or backup power systems. Um, they're really high energy, really high energy density. Um, you know, this claimed 4,000 cycle life, so these should last forever, right? If I put these into a Ford Ranger electric, um, in theory, I would have a million mile EV. I know that's a bit of a gimmick and it doesn't really mean anything, um, but yeah, I could literally drive a million miles before uh, these would degrade down to 80% of their original capacity, in theory. Now, uh, some of the high points about these batteries are they're actually um, aluminum cased, hard aluminum cased. Uh, these are what they would call prismatic cells. And now I know there's been a lot of debate and, you know, I just recently got done talking about the Chevrolet Bolt EV fires and pouch cells versus cylindrical cells. Well, this is technically the other format, right? This is a prismatic cell where it, it really functions in the same way as a cylinder, where it is a self-contained cell. It's not a pouch cell, so it doesn't need any additional support. Um, there's been debate whether these need compression, uh, but then other people have looked at the spec sheets and found that the actual aluminum casing itself provides enough compression and enough, uh, um, it has enough compressive force that you actually don't need additional compression on top of it. Uh, basically, the cell walls themselves actually regulate uh, the expansion and contraction of the cell material. Um, and so uh, given that, right, these are sort of the in-between where I think these actually are ideal for situations where you want higher energy density um, and less complication that, you know, that would come with cylindrical cells, um, but also less sort of engineering and manufacturing and packaging that would come with pouch cells. Now, um, you know, I know a lot of people will say, oh, um, you know, they say they're 280 amp hours, right? Well, these are actually 280 amp hours. I tested them out myself. I tested, I capacity tested uh, numerous cells. They performed exactly as they said they would. Um, and so that actually creates some really interesting numbers. Like these are just short of 900 uh, watt hours per cell. Um, and so uh, given I've weighed them out, they're 5.27 kilograms to make it easy for a conversion, but these are 170 watt hours per kilogram, which is really starting to rival uh, NCM batteries and NCA batteries, especially, like I said, when you consider the additional packaging that's needed, uh, because say the Chevrolet Bolt EV, uh, the Ford Mustang Mach-E, uh, the Tesla Model 3, all of their finished pack um, energy densities are right around 150 to 160 watt hours per kilogram. So these will be a little bit worse than that when finally packaged in a cell, but not that much worse. So it's actually quite impressive how far uh, the lithium um, iron phosphate LFP chemistries have come. Um, you know, and I, I had the, the sort of Kalb cell box there, you know, something else that I ordered came shipped in it, 
kind of as a joke. Um, but those old CALB cells, the Thunder Sky cells, these lithium iron phosphate cells aren't new to the DIY community um, or, you know, the, the EV conversion community. Uh, they're actually fairly well known. What's sort of new and more recent is this aluminum casing, this hardened aluminum casing, because the cells would expand um, and the nylon would sort of degrade over time. We've seen a lot of uh, Ford Ranger electrics that were upgraded with those nylon cased cells um, that, that just, they died over, over time because it's just impossible to put the necessary compression um, on the cell. Uh, and then they just degraded over time and eventually just completely uh, petered out. And you had, you know, 11, 12, 1300 pounds of worthless lithium batteries. So these, these uh, cells should withstand the, the rigors of being used in a pack um, a lot more. And maybe I should speak to that also. One of the other added benefits of this aluminum casing, this hardened aluminum casing, is um, they're actually a lot more compact than their equivalent like nylon um, counterparts, right? So I don't know exactly what the percentage would be, but easily 10 to 15% volume increase for an identical cell, but with a nylon casing. Um, so these are, these are just far, far superior um, in that regard. Uh, you know, there's some things I don't like about these cells, but I think overall, uh, these will be Basically, they're just about ideal for the Ford Ranger Electric. Now, um, I think given the pack and the pack configuration, I think the actual ideal size, given this energy density and volume density, would be about 250 um, amp hour cells, but they don't really make them. Um, you know, the other thing is these are a little bit on the tall side, right? Like if you, if you shave just an inch off of these, these would be so much easier to fit in the pack, um, without, without a whole lot of consideration. Um, you know, but these aren't really designed for automotive use. It just happens that the Ford Ranger electric, uh, the battery pack was built with, uh, either lead acid batteries or, um, you know, NIM batteries as, uh, as their, their original equipment, which are taller, bigger batteries. You know those batteries from being in cars, right? So these cells were really designed to be run four in series to replace 12 volt batteries. So if you look at it from that perspective, these are almost ideally suited to replace the NIM cells. And in fact, um, the NIM cells for the Ford Ranger Electric ran 25 in series. Well, four of these in series would make one NIM cell. So exactly 100 cells. In theory, you could put these into a NIM pack with no other changes other than you would just need to bridge between uh, to provide a, a, the sense leads for uh, the battery BMS, right, for the uh, Ford Ranger Electric. For it. So it would know basically how to control the battery overall, but the voltages would work almost identically. Um, that's how close and, and similar these are uh, to both uh, lead acid and uh, NIM batteries in terms of their overall voltage. Uh, the other thing is too, um, these are 280 amp hour cells. These are considered 1C cells. So I've seen sort of differing information on whether or not you can charge it at a full 1C, which would be 280 amps, um, but you, you can definitely discharge at a full 1C, um, even as a sustained rate. And that's actually really, really important for the Ford Ranger Electric because the entire system is only about 250 amps. So Basically, if you're running nominal voltage, you can, you can, these cells are perfectly matched to that sort of 250 amp uh, current that's built throughout the Ford Ranger electric battery. So these integrate almost perfectly within the system. I'm going to do another video where I actually focus on how they're going to fit into the pack. And I think you'll see based on that, that they also fit like extremely well. They're not perfect. 
um, but they actually fit really well within the pack. They organize very, very cleanly, um, and I think it's going to be very easy to integrate them and to build around them. So I think this is a super simple, super easy uh, cell to build with and use. And like I said, I've already tested them. I've confirmed that they're actually 280 amp hours. I don't know that they'll have the life that they claim. Um, I don't know what they, they really require in terms of cooling, you know, how, how much that might you know, degrade them over time. Um, but uh, the, the battery packs for the Ford Ranger Electric do have active thermal management. It's only air cooling, but it is an active thermal management system. I might do a little bit extra in terms of heating pads or things like that uh, to integrate them. Um, but otherwise, yeah, these are very solid. There are a few other things I don't like about them. Uh, just randomly, right, the the actual positive is black, which, you know, that's just counterintuitive. Normally black would be negative. So you really have to get used to that. Um, these are only M6 screw holes, so it's kind of hard um, to find good screws for them. And I actually ended up settling on using set screws uh, so that I can actually um, bolt the bus bars and other terminals on. Um, it's just gonna be so much easier. Um, you know, and then of course, uh, some of the issues I had with Lito Kala specifically as a seller, and you know, if I went to them again, I, well, I don't know if I would, but once I bought a set from them and validated their capacity, um, I was sort of, uh, you know, pot committed to go back to them because I wanted matching cells from the same uh, manufacturer. Uh, but uh, some of the cells that I did receive uh, were actually pretty beat up in pretty bad shape and um, I wouldn't feel comfortable using them uh, in an electric vehicle. So um, there was some attrition in the purchase, but otherwise they were also sort of the best value. So after all shipping and taxes and all costs involved were equated, um, these actually only cost me about $110 to $120 per kilowatt hour. And that in terms of price is just amazing. You can't really find that anywhere else. So this is one of those things where I was referring to why uh, I chose not to go with the Tesla Model S um, cells. Well, you're, you're looking at almost a 20% uh, capacity increase um, from these cells versus the Tesla Model S modules, uh, but for 50% of the price, right? So um, I don't need the power density uh, that the Tesla Model S uh, modules provide. I, I would really rather prefer the energy density that these cells would provide. Um, and so, I, and uh, again, the, the biggest trade-off is just weight, right? It's gonna be simpler, um, it's gonna be easier to integrate, um, it's going to be more energy for less money. Um, so I think all in all, I'm pretty happy with these right now. Uh, so it's just going to be a lot of work to integrate them into the pack. And like I said, I'll sort of share that as I go along, um, how I'm fitting them into the pack, how I'm linking them together, uh, the BMS that I'm using uh, to manage them and communicate uh, with the system, with the charger, uh, to keep everything basically running as it's supposed to but i'd love to hear what you think have you actually used these cells before like i said i've been using these uh pg e has been cutting our power off and on and i've been using these as a battery backup system to keep the house running um you know while i'm not using them to to, to drive the car um so uh i'd love to hear what you think have you had experience with these or different lithium uh cells have you used the old nylon cells uh, versus these new hardened aluminum cased cells um you know, what, what's been your experience? And maybe um, if you had a good experience with a seller of this like 280 amp hour cell, uh, you know, maybe you could share it in the comments if people, people want to know. Um, because like I said, there are a number of different providers. I got kind of stuck with uh, Lito Kala and I'm not super impressed with them um, as a seller, uh, but uh, the product is here slowly. It got here, but it's, it's solid. Um, and you know, one one final thought, again, with all of these fires and things like that we've been having um, with the, the uh, NCM cells, the NCA cells, uh, it still makes me wonder, right, why aren't some of the automakers looking at this as an option, right? Having cells with this type of chemistry, this type of format customized for automotive use. Uh, we also know there's a new cell 
LFMP, uh, which sort of mirrors uh, the NCM, NCA uh, voltages, uh, but is is safer, right, like these LFP cells, less fire prone, um, and then overall just cheaper. There's zero uh, cobalt in, in these, right? So these are cheaper to manufacture, uh, less of an impact in terms of mining, um, labor, you know, child labor issues, uh, those types of things. So the, these uh, this type of cell is something that we don't make these in the United States. Uh, I know Will Pros, who does his uh, DIY solar, he's he's went on a rant about this as well. And I don't know if the video is still up, but basically, um, why aren't we manufacturing lithium iron phosphate cells in the United States? I know uh, CATL is looking for business partners. Someone like GM, someone like Ford, someone like VW could easily partner with uh, CATL get manufacturing stateside, employ people in North America to be building these batteries so we're not tying up shipping uh, overseas, burning more fossil fuels just to ship these batteries um, when we could manufacture them locally or regionally or nationally. Um, and, uh, and again, these are especially useful for battery backup systems, solar power. Uh, people could run their entire house with just, uh, you know, 16 of these in series uh, and, and just a basic inverter setup. So I think uh, these are, are, are sort of what I'm looking forward to. Like I said, I only have enough for one battery right now. And I don't know if the second range or electric battery that I build will use these cells or something different or something similar. I'll, I'll cross that bridge when I get to it. Uh, but like I said, um, you know, 110 to 120 dollars per kilowatt hour final price for a pack that's going to be around 90 kilowatt hours and provide me with about 280 um, miles of driving range based on my sort of rule of thumb with the ford ranger electric of the amp hours um, at nominal voltage equaling roughly the miles that you can drive normally um, yeah all in all i think this is going to be a super impressive battery um, and I'll keep you posted on my progress. Um, you know, if you've, like I said, if you use these before, if you've, uh, if you, you know, what are your thoughts on LFP, um, chemistry? What are your thoughts of using this in the Ford Range or electric or other DIY, um, or EV conversion projects, or maybe getting the major automakers into using these batteries or this type of a battery as well. If you enjoyed this video, please uh, like, and subscribe. It really helps out the channel and Thank you for watching.